Hello everyone, this is Gail, and I'm back today. I'm going to do another charm that would go in our bug series, only this one is not a bug. I made a bee, and I think what I'm going to do now is make a honeycomb. And I've seen several ways of doing this, and I kind of like the way I'm going to do it now. Um, and just see how this turns out. If it doesn't work, then I will try adding something else to it. But the first thing I had to do was to make is to make some blends. And yes, these are Skinner blends. I know everybody goes, oh no, not Skinner blends again. But yes, Skinner blends again. You're going to find that a lot of the polymer clay projects start with Skinner blends rather than just a in your face solid kind of color. So, excuse me. So I am going to start with a blend and I'm going to make a light and a dark blend. To make my light, I've rolled out my pasta machine on the thin, on the thickest setting and I have cut um, one, I, I had to find a a, something to cut with. I got the largest square cutter out of the Sculpey kit. And I cut one square from antique, I mean not antique, from 18 karat gold and two squares from translucent. Now I'm also going to add just a tad, just a pinch, just a little piece of yellow just because the 18 karat isn't quite yellow enough for the gold to show up with the translucent. And then I'm going to take that and I will add a little bit of white to make a white, a lighter mix. Then to, I'm going to use for a wrap, I'm going to use one part white and one part translucent mixed together. So I'm going to mix these together and I'll be right back. Okay, here are my three blends. This is my dark blend, which is the antique gold the uh, translucent and a touch of yellow. Then I took half, I cut this in half, and to that other half I added just a little bit of white to give it a little bit lighter color. And then he, this is the white and translucent. And I'm going to put that aside for a while. Now what I'm going to do is make a Skinner blend. And I think one of the easiest ways to do this Let's see if I can do this right. Maybe I'll put this... No, I won't do that. I think what I'm going to do is I'm still going to use my cutter. This is going to be a very small Skinner blend, but for this charm I don't need very much. So I think I'm going to cut... a piece from my light blend and from my dark blend. And I'm going to cut them in half, diagonally. Stack the two halves. There's my light blend. This is my dark blend. Then put them together. There's not a lot of difference in these colors, but it will make a, it'll give it some depth. So there's my beginning of my Skinner blend. I will blend this about, oh, 20, 25 times in my pasta machine, and then I'll be back. Now I know that you can't see this, but I am going to, um, roll from dark to light and this is my dark side so just start with a tiny little roll and then just make sure that it doesn't get any air trapped so this is a little bit darker on the inside than it is on the outside 
I'm going to push my ends in. And this is my wrap, which is the white and translucent, but I am going to roll this out. It's right now at a number three. I'm going to try a number five. Because this being such a small log, I don't think I'm going to need a whole lot of the wrap. Just make sure it's got a clean edge to start. Roll it up. Let it touch. Roll it back. And then I have to excuse my head if it gets in the way. There, that's that's a good wrap. I'm gonna put the white out of the way for the time being. And this is my white and translucent. They look pretty similar, but they really are not the same. Okay, so what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to roll it and reduce it. And I'm going to actually make a little flower. So there's my little roll. Let me get my ruler out. Oh, I can't do that. It's tucked away where I can't get to it. I'll use my short one. So that's six. Seven and a half inches. So I need about six pieces. So I'm going to cut this like maybe an inch and a quarter. Let's see what happens. That's an inch and a quarter. Two. Three. I hope I have enough. Four. Not quite. So I'm just going to cut that one in half. Well, it's not what I wanted to do, but anyway. Let me cut these the same size. I'm going to show you again how to fix a mistake. Because I cut it to the wrong size. Just cut off an end and stick it on this end. So now I have six of these with our blend wrapped in white. I'm going to take the dark blend and make a log about the same diameter as these. And what I'm actually going to do is make a little flower. Well, I might need that a little bit smaller. So let me just put this together. So I'm going to put these together like I would if it were a flower. You're wondering what I'm doing, aren't you? Let me just trim this little end off. If I do this, put two on each side and then one on each end, I come up with 
Well, actually, that's how you make the flower. So let me go ahead and cut this. Let me cut it the same size. There you go, there's three. And the other three should go right around this. And you're making a little flower, but if you look at it, what you've done is you've actually because this has the white around each one of these, it's actually putting white around this one, so it's going to be seven cells. So then I'm going to make just stretch it a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is try, because the center one, if you look at it, the center one is kind of in a hexagon shape. After you compress it, so what I want to do is to roll this so that all of these others create a hexagon shape. I don't know if this is going to work, but at least it'll get close. I'm just rolling across the top of each one to see if that helps make it a hexagon. I don't think that worked. I think what I need to do is take, I'm going to take an acrylic block, and I'm actually, this is a thin ac acrylic block, and I'm going to press on that side all the way around. And it's not really important because this is all going to get reduced and it's going to lose its shape again. But if you can kind of get it started, excuse me, in the shape you want it, then turn it around the other way and do the other side. That's helped a little bit. They're not real round anymore. There's a little bit of shape to them, but like I said, I'm not worrying about it. So then I'm going to reduce this. And I don't want to roll it because then I'll lose these edges here. But I want to reduce this back to about the size that it was, which was what, about seven and a half inches, I think I said it was. And this is going to take a little while because I don't want to roll it. So I have to just pull it and stretch it. to give me an idea how long I need this to be. I don't want to pull too hard because I don't want to break it. But these ends are what's going to be the hardest. And just kind of work your way down. You don't want to pull too much on the ends by themselves. OK, 
Okay, that should be about it. Now since this is pretty small, and you can make them larger than this, I just didn't want to make a big one. But I'm going to cut these in one inch segments. hope I end up with seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm going to put together another little flower. I'll just pick one to be the center. Actually, I can do this one this way. I can put three down and then put two on this side. Flip it over and put two on this side. And then compress it. Now this will naturally, if you roll on the seams, it will fall into a hexagon shape. And you can make this any shape you want, but because it's hexagon, I'm going to keep it that way. But let me just do a little slice. But look at that. Doesn't that look like a honeycomb? But let me make all these little things flat. Okay, still not very hexagonal, but I don't care. So what I would do now is I would take a piece of, actually I'll just do it on a patty paper. I would take a slice, and that's about the size I would like my charm to be. Now if you want your charm smaller, you can reduce it. Then I would get a ball tool. And let me see which one is going to be the best for this. I think this might be too big. So I'm going to go with the next biggest, which I believe is this one. And what I'm going to do is go into each little cell and make a little divot. And because this is going to be a charm, and you'll see it from both sides, you'll need to do this on both sides. So I am not going to bore you with that. I will turn the camera off and I'll be back when I'm done. Okay, here's my honeycomb after I've poked in the center of each one of those. And I could actually have gone a little bit smaller. This is probably going to be a little bit big for what I wanted to do. But I'm going to, uh, I'll bake this one. I'm also going to reduce this a little bit and make one a little bit smaller just to see if that makes a difference in how it looks because I don't want it to be really big. So I'm going to do a second one exactly like this, maybe a little bit smaller, and then I'm going to bake them and then I'll be back. All right, here's my two that I did. I did haven't baked them yet. I wanted to come back because I think I'm going to bake these in two separate um, steps. And I'll do both of them. But I'm going to take one of my favorite tools, which is a toothpick. And let me find uh, something to put. Oh, I know what I'll do. 
Except I moved them. Where did I move them to? I hate when I clean up. I can't ever find anything. I'm going to use this little paint palette and pour just a little bit of uh, Kato liquid poly clay. And you're not going to need much. That's going to be probably plenty. If not, it's right here. And I'm going to take a toothpick and I'm just going to pick up a little bit of this and put it down in each one of these little holes. And you don't want to fill it up to the top. But this is going to give it that look of honey. And you don't have to fill all of them. You know how in a honeycomb, sometimes they're not all full. Some of them are empty. So leave a couple of them empty. Maybe the bees ate those. Because you know, honey is not just a food for people. It's also a food for the bees. And that's what they live off of in the wintertime. Just fill as many as you want with the liquid clay. Oops, I got a little bit too much on that one, so let me just roll across and I'll put some in there. That actually makes it a little bit easier. I think I've done all I want to on that one. This is the larger one. And I'm only going to do it on the one side, and then I'm going to bake, and then I'm going to turn it over and do the other side. Do the exact same thing. So I probably will not be back until I have baked the second side also. This would also be the time where you might want to put your little eye pin in. can do. I can get it on my finger and run it across the top. There we go. So I will go ahead and bake these and then I will come back and after it's baked on the other side and well I'm sorry first let me put the little eye pins in before I forget. Keep these little eye pins here. And let me get a pair of pliers. And I'm going to bend the end just to make a little hook. And then I'm going to bend it back the other way. See, that gives you a little squiggle. That's going to keep it from coming out of the clay. So I'll do the same here. I'll do a little bend and then bend back the other way. And then what I'll do is we'll just use my toothpick. I will make a hole where you want your hole. Whoops. And because these are so tiny, see I've already lost one.
I'm sure it's here somewhere. But just insert this into your hole. Make sure it doesn't stick out, which is kind of difficult when you're dealing with a honeycomb. Like that. And when I find the other one, I will put that in. I'm sure it's flipped somewhere. So I will be back after it's baked. Hi everyone. I just wanted to show you the finished charms. This one's a little bit bigger than this one. And they're not perfect in, in uh, shape because honeycombs aren't perfect either. But there you go. Whoops. That's the, the last side that they baked on. And then this one. But I think they're really cute. And I think this would look really cute on a charm bracelet right next to that bee charm or put them on the same, um, same hook. I think that would be really cute. So, hope you enjoyed this. I will be back soon with another polymer clay video. Bye-bye.